The overall goal of the following experiment is to illustrate the use of glycosidases for the enzymatic deglycosylation and analysis of N and O-linked glycosylation on a model glycoprotein. This is achieved by treating a glycoprotein with PNGAs F or with the protein deglycosylation mix. Also, the protein deglycosylation mix was supplemented with a mixture of additional exoglycosidases, which sometimes help remove otherwise resistant sugars. We illustrate this method using a model glycoprotein, recombinant human chorionic gonadotropin beta, or HCG beta. Next, SDS page, followed by Kumasi blue staining and a sugar-specific staining method ProQ Emerald 300 are used in order to analyze the deglycosylated HCG beta sample. Results are obtained which show that HCG beta is heterogeneously glycosylated and contains multiple glycoforms based on the differences in protein migration with and without glycosidase treatment and the diminished signal on ProQ staining as the glycans are successively removed. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods such as mass spectrometry analysis is that it's simple, uses common laboratory equipment, and is good for the novice glycobiologist. This method can answer key questions in the glycobiology field such as, is my protein glycosylated? To begin enzymatic deglycosylation, thaw the supplied buffers from the protein deglycosylation kit Mix the tubes thoroughly and keep at room temperature. Place the enzyme-containing vials on ice. Dissolve the contents of the HCG beta vial in 600 microliters of distilled water and keep on ice. After preparing 1 milliliter of 1x G7 buffer by diluting the 10x stock in distilled water, use 25 microliters to dilute 0.5 microliters of PNGA's F. Prepare the exoglycosidase mix by combining 2 microliters each of the 4 exoglycosidases. Next, add HCG beta and 10x glycoprotein denaturing buffer to 7 numbered PCR tubes as indicated in the written protocol. Cap the tubes and mix gently. Denature the proteins in the thermocycler by incubating 10 minutes at 94 degrees Celsius followed by a 4 degrees Celsius hold. After removing the tubes from the thermocycler, centrifuge to remove any visible condensation. To each reaction tube, add the remaining reagents according to the written protocol. Close the PCR tubes using new caps. Then mix the tubes by gently tapping four times. After spinning down the contents, place the tubes in the thermocycler. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for four hours follow by cooling the samples to 4 degrees Celsius. To set up SDS page, prepare fresh 3x reducing SDS loading buffer with DTT. Add 12.5 microliters of the prepared 3x reducing SDS loading buffer to each sample. Close the tubes with new caps and gently tap the tubes to mix. Incubate the tubes in a thermocycler at 94 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes and then cool to 4 degrees Celsius. Following incubation, load 30 microliters of each sample and 10 microliters of the protein marker on a 10 to 20% trisglycine gel, saving the remainder of each sample. Electrophoresis the gel at 130 volts until the dye front is near the bottom of the gel. When the gel has finished running, remove the gel from the cast and place it in a small plastic box with enough Kumasi blue stain to cover the gel. Stain the gel for one hour with gentle agitation. After the gel is stained, wash three times for 30 minutes in 50 milliliters of de-stain solution. Record the images using a white light transilluminator or scanner. Alternatively, the gel can be dried between sheets of cellophane in a frame.
Run the remainder from each sample and a protein marker on a 10 to 20% Trisglycine gel. While the gel is running, dissolve the Pro-Q Emerald reagent with DMF and prepare the stock fix, wash, and oxidizing solutions for the stain following the product manual provided with the kit. When the electrophoresis is complete, remove the gel from the cast and place it in a plastic box. Fix the gel by adding 100 milliliters of the prepared fix solution. Leave the gel overnight at room temperature with gentle agitation. The following day, wash the gel with 100 milliliters of the prepared wash solution for 10 to 20 minutes at room temperature with gentle agitation, repeating the wash a second time with fresh wash solution. Next, oxidize the carbohydrates by incubating the gel with gentle agitation for 30 minutes in 25 milliliters of the prepared oxidizing solution. Follow the incubation with two additional washes. While the gel is washing, prepare fresh Pro-Q Emerald 300 stain by adding 500 microliters of the Pro-Q Emerald 300 reagent solution to 25 milliliters of staining buffer provided in the kit. Stain the gel by incubating in the prepared stain under dark conditions with gentle agitation for 90 to 120 minutes. Subsequent to gel staining, repeat the two wash steps as described earlier. Then, record the images with a UV transilluminator at 300 nanometers. As a final step, compare the images of the Kumasi stained gel with the Pro-Q Emerald stained gel. The changes in protein migration after enzymatic deglycosylation can be seen when the control sample is compared with the PNGA's F treatment to remove N glycans and to the deglycosylation mix treatment to remove N and O glycans. No further reduction in size is seen after digesting with additional glycosidases. Besides a change in mass, bands become sharper as glycans are removed. A band running under the 17 kilodalton marker probably represents the fully deglycosylated HCG beta polypeptide. Lanes 5 to 7 show the bands corresponding to the glycosidases. Other bands might derive from incomplete deglycosylation or from multiple unidentified proteins present in the HCG beta sample. The emerald green reagent oxidizes and stains all glycans present in a protein molecule. Therefore, the intensity of the signal decreases as HCG beta is enzymatically deglycosylated. The residual signal in lanes 3 and 4 indicate the presence of glycan motifs, which are resistant to the enzymes used. The additional glycosidases used in lane 4 remove a few extra sugar residues. The protein migration is the same, but a slight reduction in intensity in staining can be seen. Resistant sugar moieties were not present in all protein species. Some bands were not detected by emerald green, indicating that they were extensively deglycosylated. Additional data support the conclusion that HCG beta is heterogeneously glycosylated. The lower band on lane 2 is faint on the emerald green image, while the upper band on lane 2 is bright, indicating that many glycan groups are still present. These data support the conclusion that recombinant HCG beta expressed in mouse cells contains multiple glycoforms due to the inherent heterogeneity of glycosylation. Following this procedure, other methods such as mass spectrometry can be performed in order to answer additional questions such as what is the rate of occupancy, what is the extent of glycosylation, or what is the fine structure of the glycans. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to use glycosidases for the enzymatic deglycosylation and analysis of NNO-linked glycans on glycoproteins. The choice of detection can be difficult because protein staining reagents are useful only if the deglycosylation results in a significant shift in molecular mass. For other proteins, we have seen abnormal migrations after deglycosylation and have found that any change in migration is evidence that the protein has been deglycosylated.